Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. As you may know, I have been uh, struggling with my floor in my shed because, like an idiot, I did it in the summer, it went wrong. Being impatient, I have kind of redone it in the winter. The epoxy was fine, the acrylic not so much, the uh, what's it, polyurethane. Uh, didn't want to set, found out it can take over 30 days and that's if you can keep the uh, surface hot. So I've bought a diesel heater, mainly because I don't have access to all my toys at the moment to make a waste oil heater. This is probably as close to a cheaper solution as I can find. My first thoughts were straight away, the exhaust system on these is going to waste so much heat. So I built a stainless steel radiator. I built it in stainless steel because of the corrosive nature of the vapours that come out of these things. It is stainless steel, but I've also placed the heater on a slant and made sure that if any moisture builds up, it will run out of the exhaust and into the garden. The radiator itself is a metre long, half a metre high and 40 millimetres thick or 4 centimetres thick. You can't touch the thing, the entire radiator is hot, even down here, which is the coolest area. Um, yeah, you can touch it briefly, it's hot. The rest of it, with a sort of uh, diagonal plane going down to the exhaust in the corner, you can't touch it, it'll take the skin off your fingers. That's quite a large chamber to be heating, uh, and it's working really well. If I, uh, I was mucking around, flicking water and that over it, and it boils off straight away. So this is how I made it. Just simple as take wild it up. I used the stitch welding technique for this because I, there's no folds in this heater. I didn't have access to anything to fold it. Although I'm in my workshop right now, uh, I'm stepping around everything that's on the floor. I've got both my trials bikes in the shed with me. Uh, there's just stuff everywhere. Even the uh, hand plane is still on the table I'm working on. So I stitch welded it all to help compensate for the fact that this is fully welded along every single edge uh, just to help reduce the distortion and it, 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 it worked I mean it didn't have to be perfect it's only going to have hot air blowing for it but um, yeah it all clouded up mostly anyway so win win
as always, the TIG welding is the cows. Um, a lot of welding. I mean, uh, there's, uh, there's four, it's about six meters of weld just over in there, so it took ages to weld a lot. So I've left plenty of length on the exhaust tube due to the fact that I've eventually got to line my shed walls and insulate them so I've given myself extra to allow for me to pull the heater into the shed. I don't want to pack it in. You're not funny. <laughs> you think you're so hilarious. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so what I've done down here, I've drilled the hole as tight to the edge of the gauge of the bottom piece of steel. And I've placed this tube off centered from it, just slightly so as it's a step down, no matter what. Uh, after doing some research about this, before I, I was going to do something different, which I'll tell you about later, I want to make sure that the, um, the condensation that builds up in this can just run out. Even though this is, uh, marine grade stainless I'd still rather the condensation just run out <laughs>
nothing particularly special about it, just the hollow box. Uh, thinking about it, I should have possibly placed a couple of baffles inside to prevent this corner from being cooler, then the rest of it would circulate the gases better. Uh, now there are a few things I've done specifically that popped into my head. Firstly, I found out that this is a balanced system, as in the back pressure from the exhaust and the air intake are matched to create a clean burn. So as soon as I used the original exhaust and got past it, that was it. I opened up all, what would you call it, flow. I don't know, so it was flowing freely as if it had been vented outside. 40 millimeters thick is far better than 25 millimeters, and my exhaust is around about 35 millimeters. I did this, I didn't want to create any back pressure within this. I wanted it to be able to free flow out with what's been put in there to ensure it doesn't blow the flame out, put strain on the blower, or any other potential issues that I haven't thought about. Um, the heater works great. It's keeping it nice and warm in here, nice and toasty. I mean, yeah, you don't want to do that. Um, can't really show you how hot it is because it's shiny. It's hot, very hot. In my opinion, this is going to be the best option for any form of heat exchange because I had considered using radiators and things like that due to the corrosive nature of the fumes. It's a no-go. And what I've done is I have made sure that everything, you know, this is hollow, the exhaust at the lowest point, plus a little bit more because I've given a slight overhang from the bottom of the radiator to the bottom of the exhaust. There's a bit of a lift that I've welded to make sure everything flows out. So even though this is stainless steel, I've also removed any potential of, for some reason, it corroding and corrosive sitting in there, maybe spilling out sort of thing. I should have put some heat sink fins on here, some, as uh, I think it would have been better. I mean, that is very, very warm up there. Uh, but it could have done with some heating. It would have been nice to make it out of aluminium, but I don't know if aluminium would withstand the corrosive nature of the fumes. Uh, that's about it, guys. So this is just a quick idea I had, and it's simple. No real skill needed, just quickly wired it up, put it together. You've removed all your issues of corrosion and uh, condensation build up. It's a larger bore to allow the exhaust to pass through freely without restrictions to the heater and um, it works. I haven't tested the exhaust outside because it is absolutely pouring down at the moment and I'm soaked anyway I don't really want to get any wetter. So yeah thank you very much and I'll catch you on the next one.